I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we're working on restoring our sailing yacht. Some of you might think we're crazy taking on the challenge of restoring this boat and creating a life less ordinary. And we're sure there will be blood, sweat and tears, but it'll all be worth it when we embark on our epic adventure around the world. Hi everybody! Right, Jack and I are at the boat today. Um, and we are going to continue work, um, which we started some time ago, um, but we're going to carry on um, with work on the coach roof. Um, I've spent far too long this morning sitting on the new cockpit seats, drinking tea, um, but now it's time to get some work done. Unfortunately, the wind, uh, which was not meant to be today, has stopped play out on here. I can't, um, I can't do anything, treat any of the rust and grind any of that away, because uh, obviously I don't want it to go on the other boats. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to do a different job. So what am I doing now? I am currently just cleaning all the dust off the pilot house roof. Hopefully later on I'll be able to get another coat of paint on this. Um, but while the wind's a bit high. So I'd give this a quick clean. Oh, now it's raining. Oh. I will go see them, but we have no work of the medical people. Walking through the streets among collapsed and crumbling ancient coral buildings, we saw only men wearing white. Now, while the weather's pants, I'm just gonna. Do some tea coiling, just have a relaxing Sunday, I think. Right, we have decided to declare today a rest day, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We have, well, I have. Jack stayed in his pajamas most of the day. <laughs> um, I've cleaned the, cleaned the pot, I got all my tools out, then it got windy. Then, it's raining, even though yeah. the weather forecast said it wasn't going to be raining. I know. So then I clean the pilot house roof, um, ready to paint again. Okay. Um, and then it started raining. So then I went inside, thought about starting the bilges. You did some tea coiling. So, but I didn't do that. So I ended up doing some tea coiling and just chilling with Jack, listening to an audio book. So we're going to go and drive. Yeah, and what audio book was it? Um, Sailing Pirate Waters. Um, but yeah. So we're gonna get off the island and see if the weather's better on the other side and if it's it is possibly. Right, we are on the Isle of Anglesey. Yeah. We're gonna get off the island and see what the weather's like on the other side. Yeah, and if it's if it's nice, it. then we might go and explore somewhere. So next job on the list is to sort out these holes in the pilot house where the old instruments were. So we've got um, there was a speaker here and you know, sort of wind and depth uh, instruments here. Uh, we're not going to be putting those because we're going to be putting the instruments on a pod in the cockpit. So I'm going to start um, start working on some patches to fill some of these holes up. doing at the moment is cleaning up around this hole that I'm going to cut out and I'm cleaning up uh, using this terracou thing that I've talked about before so I can see how far back I need to cut so at the minute it's looking like about here and about here and to get out all of that nasty steel and just put it back in and one of the things that uh, is always a struggle is to think oh I'll just do this little bit along here and I'll just go up here and I'll just go along there it's so easy to just kind of keep going and keep going and keep going and my priority today is get 
a piece of metal welded into that hole. And if I spend an hour cleaning up the whole of this with this Teraku, I'm not going to have time to put a piece of metal in that hole and we're going to be back to square one. So I'm sort of desperately trying to be restrained and, uh, and self-controlled and just clean up this bit and weld this bit in before I move on to that bit or that bit or even start looking at that bit. Um, that, that actually won't be too bad, but it, it's really, really hard for me to just be self-controlled and stick to the job and just do this little bit here. But uh, that's where Melissa's a lot more focused than I am. Right, I've come to a conclusion. I know what this is like. It's like practicing scales. So for years and years, before I became a paramedic, I was a um, musician, I was a guitarist. And um, for a long time, I spent ages working on technique and just practicing um, 16th note triplets. <laughs> practicing arpeggios. And what I had to do to get those good was just sit for hours and hours and hours monotonously focusing intently on the same thing again and again and again until it was right. So that's the kind of philosophy that I'm going to try and adopt here because uh, I can do it and I have done it. Um, but, uh, you know, the creative side of me wants to keep going and go off onto tangents. But the technical side of me has to stay focused and get this done. I made that coffee and um, and never drunk it, so I've decided before I weld this disc thing in. I'd have a coffee and uh, play some guitar. piece of steel and weld it in. Try doing that in fiberglass. Going over this with the flap disc, it doesn't actually create a great surface for painting on. And it does get rid of all the specks of rust in the surface, so that's just for welding it in. Before I uh, paint it finally, uh, I'll probably put some red oxide on to protect it. Before it gets its final coat, I will be going over it with the Terracou, which of course is the correct surface prep. 
um, because it's a blaster, it's a rotary blaster, not a sand blaster, but it, uh, that surface will be prepped properly before it gets the epoxy on it. I'm letting this cool down a little bit between runs because I don't want to build up too much heat in the panel and crack this piece of glass. I'm no good at vertical welds. There's far too much wire in that. There's not enough heat in it, so it's not brilliant. Once it's ground flat, it'll be fine, but I'm rubbish at vertical welds. That one's better, you see, but that's going downwards. Proper welders go up. Well, that panel's in, gonna let that cool down uh, and then tackle this one and that one and crack on with the job. Uh, yeah, it's all sealed and watertight and it'll be fine once it's ground down. I'm just not very good at welding vertical lines. The angle grinder and these thin cutting discs are amazing for cutting through steel. They, they really do go through it very quickly. They're really good and uh, we've been gifted loads of these by people on our Amazon wish list, which we just can't thank you enough. Um, uh, we've had so much stuff, uh, flap discs and cutting discs and everything else. And we're really, really appreciative because we go through these like, like you wouldn't believe. But as you know, we're sponsored by Lincoln, who've given us the MIG welder, and they've also given us this amazing plasma cutter, which we've been using a lot. You've probably seen it in various episodes. Now, where that's going to be fantastically handy is this job now. As you've seen, I've done that one, which is all straight edges. I've now got to do this one, which is a round hole. Now, I've drawn on the back using this welder's pencil, um, so I can cut that out. But doing that with an angle grinder would be... You could do it. You could snip, snip, like 50 pence piece it, if you're English, or I don't know. What American coins have got flat sides? Somebody tell me. But you could go around it in the flat sides and then clean it all up and make it fit and it would work uh, and if we had to that's what we'd do but it's going to be much easier to cut around this with the plasma cutter because i can just go round freehand in a in a reasonably uh, accurate line um, what's really cool is that this plasma cutter that we've been given you don't need an external compressor you can put an external compressor on if you want to but you don't need one it's got a built-in compressor so I don't have to go firing up the big petrol compressor down um, down below. So let's get this cut, hey? And you do need gloves for that because that is pretty flipping hot. Cleaned up. Again, remember, I'm going to put some red oxide on this once I've painted it in, but before it gets the epoxy, it will get the treatment with the Terracou so it's surface prepped properly and it's got all of the rust removed from it. Just on that note, something I've um, mentioned in episodes before, when you buy brand new steel, um, it comes with mill scale on it, which is a, the kind of black surface. That surface is absolutely no good for, for welding, it's no good for, uh, for painting, uh, and you have to get it off somehow. Now, the, the preferred method for getting it, of course, of course, is sandblasting, and you sandblast it back till it's a particular grade. I won't go into that, and I, I've been reading up a little bit about it, but I'm no expert on it. But you sand it up to a particular grade of grit using a sandblaster, and it gets all the mill scale off, and it preps the surface of the steel, and that's all lovely. Now, as you know, we can't sandblast in this yard, so a lot of advice that we've had from a lot of other metal boat owners and steel fabricators and um, yacht engineers is leave it out in the rain, uh, leave it out uh, just to brown off uh, to get a little bit of a brown surface, which as you've noticed a lot of our steel does, just leave it outside and that blows all the mill scale off. Then you can clean it up, 
with the flap disc, weld it in, and then surface prep it using uh, spot blasting or using the, the Terracou rotary blaster or whatever. So that's the method we're doing. So if you're puzzling over why, why are we using rusty metal, we're not. We're using brand new steel that we've bought that's been left outside just to brown off to get rid of the mill scale. Um, tell me if you think that that's a horrific way to do it but that's the advice we've had from lots and lots and lots of, of engineers and boat builders and uh, as many people as you ask about these things you'll get a, a different opinion ask 50 people you'll get 50 opinions so um but that seems to be a fairly consistent advice from quite a lot of people including the guys that that work in the yard here so there you go tell us if you think it's horrendously wrong though That's welded in, that's welded in. I've ground this one flat. I don't want to spend too much time grinding today um, because I want to get as much welding done as I can because uh, we can grind and finish the welds off another time. But that's okay, that's okay. Um, let's have a look at the back. That's the back side of that weld. So I've, wel I've uh, welded around the inside as well and there's welded around the inside of that. So even though they might not be as pretty as if somebody else had done them, uh, they're fine. There's no, they're strong and they're not going to leak. Um, and let's face it, if it, this is the coach roof, what's the worst that can possibly happen if there's a pinhole in that leak, in, in that weld? Well, the worst that can possibly happen is um, possibly it rusts ag again in a few years. Uh, the boat's not going to sink, the boat's not going to fall apart. It's not dangerous, it might just, just be at worst inconvenient, but certainly not dangerous. So, um, uh, and to be honest, I don't think it will, I think it'll be fine. Well, all the patches are in. One, two, three, four, and five. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why have you left all those rust patches? Why don't you deal with those and paint them? I don't have time today. I've done the patches, they're welded in. Next time I can clean all of this up uh, and treat it properly. What I've got to do, of course, is uh, get some red oxide on that paint to protect it until next time and then it'll be a case of grinding back those welds and going over the whole thing with the epoxy uh, the epoxy from Jotun. But for now it's just a case of cleaning them up and painting them. I've got one more patch I want to try and do before I go, I'll see if I've got time. I was going to do another patch. Um, there's a patch on the transom that I want to do. That patch there, and it kind of goes across the side of the seat. It's where I took out um, some really bad steel from the transom. Now, I'm not talking about the long one, that's, uh, that's going to be the deck drain. But the patch halfway up the transom now, I'm not going to do that because this Jotun paint is pretty flammable and it does tend to kind of smolder and puff up a little bit. And I can fire watch the outside from either side of the transom while I'm welding it myself. But I'm here on my own and what I really need for this one is somebody in the back lazarette just with a damp cloth in case that does go up. So I'm just going to be sensible and do that next time. Uh, so for now I'm just going to uh, clean up, tidy up and get some red oxide on these patches. Um, yeah, quite pleased with today. Uh, good progress. Doesn't seem like a lot to you probably, just a load of little patches in a boat, but trust me, that's a lot of work for a day. <laughs> um, you're probably sitting there thinking, flipping heck, this is taking a long time. Why doesn't he get on with this job? Um, this is how long it takes, guys. So there we are at the end of another day. Um, I've put four, five patches in um, and uh, 
prepped them and painted them and that's pretty much it really um, just to kind of show you the the difference this one here i've cleaned back with the grinder there's a tiny little pinhole there but i've cleaned it back with the grinder um, and just kept feeding in some more welding wire clean it back a bit more filled in some more welding wire uh, and that's now pretty good uh, it needs just cleaning up um, skimming with some uh, epoxy filler uh, and I've actually got some really nice stuff from West System uh, which we'll use to skim just to lightly skim that to take out any imperfections um, these ones yet yeah, I haven't ground the welds back so you can see the difference between weld not ground back and weld ground back and it also enables me then to identify any tiny little pinholes and uh, we've also got the weld penetration kits that you spray on as well which which does the same thing so again this one's not being ground back um, and neither have these two um, and I've uh, the only places I've put the red oxide paint are the places where I've actually done you know removed paint and exposed metal so we're starting to get quite a lot of red oxide on this boat but every time I do any work and every time I remove paint back to bare metal I'm just now putting some red oxide on just to protect it even though this will probably get blasted off and replaced with uh, the uh, two-pack epoxy system but I don't want to be wasting that two-pack epoxy system until we're ready for it and then we can clean up the whole cockpit in one go and um, when all the welding and all the fabricating and all the cutting and grinding and the really nasty stuff is done then we can then we can prep and paint the entire thing uh, but it won't take very much to, to to lift that off and i think actually with the spec sheet i think you can paint over this red oxide anyway but if you can't i'll just take it off it's not a problem that's all tidied up um i've got to put the jet washer away just suddenly forgot that and uh having put everything away the paint brushes the paint blah 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 blah, blah I've forgotten to paint that patch. I have welded the patch in, but I've forgotten to paint it. I'm not getting everything else out again now. That can deal with that next time. But I have had a clever. One of the things that we've been wondering about is the gas locker. Now, as you may recall, and if you don't recall, go back and watch the uh, many episodes before where the gas locker used to be here and it was in a stupid place um, and it was full of water and it was just daft. So how about this? That gas locker, sit, that gas bottle sits quite nicely there. We can actually sit a pair of them side by side here. Bear with me. And then take the seat, which I was going to just take straight across, in a curve over the two gas bottles so that it's a more comfy curve to sit on when you're at a high angle of heel or when the boat's heeling over. You've got a curved seat here but the gas bottles are effectively out in the cockpit safe they will drain straight overboard just straight out the scuppers at the back of the cockpit here the cockpit drains so there's no risk of gas getting into the boat and um and they'll be hidden underneath this seat uh, which this uh, sort of arched curved seat i think that's a good idea uh, tell me in the comments if you think it's a stupid idea but it actually um it gives the right height to sit on here at the top half plenty of room to stand behind the wheel um, so I think this is a, a, a really nice idea to, to basically have the gas bottles out in the cockpit I, loads of people just have them out on the back of the boat tied to the, the, the push pit rail anyway um, because it's safer uh, but it doesn't look very pretty does it but having the gas bottles out here in the cockpit under that hidden seat, I think that's a marvellous idea. Oh, tell me what you think. Obviously, with this project, we're going through an awful lot of steel. We get it from Mona F and T in um, Anglesey. A link in the description. So if you need to get any steel anywhere in Wales, I think they ship across the entire country. Great guys to work with. 
and if you wanted to uh, some people feel like they want to contribute to this project we don't ask anybody to we don't expect anybody to and anybody that does is just a legend but if you did want to uh, you could ring them up and uh, put something on account and then that would help fund the steel for the project and similarly with the gas um, we're using this uh, argon heavy argon mix from hobby weld uh, and we get it from uh, Weld Gas Cymru, Weld Gas Wales. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to them as well because they're the two things that we're using most of now. Um, grinding discs or cutting discs, flap discs, uh, we've got loads of. Um, we're always going to need more. But steel and welding gas. Um, so we're running through that at a rate of knots. Uh, but that's the way it is. Uh, so part of the reason as well the project takes a little bit longer to kind of gain momentum is uh, we have to wait each month until we get paid to go and buy more steel and more gas. Uh, that's just the way it is, that's life. But I uh, just thought I'd put a link in the description to those two guys who are fantastic in supporting us with the, the gas and the steel. And now I'm all up, ready to go, taking this gas to go and get changed. Um, I've got my son's graduation uh, this Friday. I'm immensely proud. Uh, my son Stephen got a first in maths, uh, but his graduation ceremony was delayed by a year because of uh, the dreaded COVID. Uh, but on Friday, I'm going to um, see my son graduate, and I'm just so so proud of him. Love you, but love you, mate. Uh, you're just my hero. Uh, but unfortunately, it means I'm missing Melissa's birthday, which is also on Saturday, on Friday, on the same day. So I'm dashing down to. Um, Chichester to the or to Portsmouth rather to my son's graduation on Friday and then dashing back as quickly as I can afterwards uh, and we're gonna have a bit of a barbecue here on Saturday for Melissa's birthday I think so uh, remember to wish Melissa a happy birthday in the comments everybody um, off to get gas now <laughs> First class honors, Stephen Turner. Yeah. Yeah.